Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Mahdi Tijani back with you again, aka the Red Mahdi, aka the Masculine Reviver. And today I'm going to be reacting to a video called, entitled Five Reasons Why I Accepted Polygamy. Uh, it's a video by a sister, I can't remember her name. I hate to get finicky here, but it's not actually polygamy, it's polygyny. Polygamy is where a man can marry multiple women or be intimate with multiple women, but a woman can also be intimate with multiple men. So we just got to get those terms right. It's polygyny. And I take issue as well with um, five reasons why I accepted. Habibti, whether you accept or don't accept, you don't have a choice. But of course, it's better if you accept. This is definitely healthier for the marriage. That's an important distinction, by the way, before we get into the video. A lot of sisters are under this false impression that a man must seek his wife's permission before marrying again. Nonsense, twaddle. Bring me one ayah, one hadith where the Prophet has either mentioned that or did that. Prophet will come back from war sometimes with a wife. This is absolute twaddle, nonsense. No, you do not need your wife's permission. No, she does not need to permit you or agree to it for that matter. If you have an agreement in place in your premarital contract that if you marry again, she has the right to leave, she reserves the right to leave, then yeah, you've you got a problem there. You, you effed up if you, if you made that contract with her. And I've gone into reasons for that in previous videos. Um, but aside from that, no, you don't need her permission. You don't need to ask her. And Prophet Sam will come back from war sometimes with a wife. You don't need to tell her at all. It is better, definitely, to have that discussion with her and to make her aware, especially especially if she's a very jealous woman. Anyway, let's get cracking. First things first, I am going to tell you about five reasons why I accepted polygamy. Okay? So the first reason is that um, the society that we live in has this invisible uh, ranking chart of something they call... Uh, wife material okay so for women it's much more it's much more difficult and challenging to be to rank high in that chart of being called wifely material because well when when a man is looking for a wife what they look in is they look at their age they look at the body size you can't be bigger or taller than the man your appearance if you're beautiful your marital status if you are divorced you're single you're widowed if you have children if you don't and your education, like how, how educated are you? If you have a PhD or a master's girl, if you are have been exposed to, let's say, westernized life. Okay, 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 okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's just address these one at a time. I don't know why the sister has gotten the idea that uh, men are essentially fussier than women when it comes to their marriage choices. They should be. They sure as hell should be. Or at least we should be fussier. But men, generally speaking, will take what they can find. And this is because women are hypergamous. That means... A woman, generally speaking, wants to marry a man who's stronger than her, smarter than her, more intelligent than her, and definitely wealthier than her, right? Men don't have that same prerequisite. What does that mean? It means that women are automatically ruling out any man that doesn't match up to her level, in her eyes at least, whatever she perceives to be her level. Men don't have that same ranking. Let me give you an example. A successful female CEO, she will not be caught dead with a cleaner for a husband. She will not marry a cleaner husband. She might have fun with him if she's a single woman. And I say fun, zina, basically. But she will not be caught dead marrying him. No way. But a billionaire man, he may well marry a cleaner woman. If she's feminine enough, fit enough, friendly, looks good enough. Yes, he'll marry the, uh, the girl behind the counter in McDonald's. So I'm not sure where this sister's getting these ideas or notions from. But it's completely incorrect. Women are fussier than men. Across the board, by the way. In an interesting study that I was uh, listening to the other day on a podcast, fascinating. Pornhub have extracted a number of different data sets from the content that their viewers consume. And they have noted that women are consummately fussier when it comes to appearances than men. I was like, what? Well, how do you work that one out? So what they found was Men are interested in, or have an interest, I should say, in so many different variations of porn. Midget porn, old women porn, um, I don't even know, I can't remember the, the different types of porn he was talking about. So many different types of porn, whereby a woman is, I don't even know if I'm allowed to say that word on YouTube, fam. Hey, this word might, might get taken down, you know. Oh well, yalla. So many different types of porn that these individuals, or men I should say, who are who watch consume that content are are into so many different flavors and variations. Women are into just one. 
One type. They're not into midget porn for men. They're not into dad board porn or to old men porn. No, they're into one type. And it's the archetypal, lean, uh, slightly muscular fireman type of physique. That's it. They're not interested in anything else. And I found that to be very interesting. So I used to think that men were fussier on the looks department than women are. Apparently not. So I don't know where the sister's getting this from, but men, sorry, women are far more particular when it comes to the metrics that a man has to live up to in her eyes. He has to be as wealthy as me, at least, preferably wealthier. He has to be definitely at least as strong as me, preferably stronger. Definitely got to be at least as smart as me, as this definitely smarter, or, or preferably smarter. She mentioned here PhD and so on. Yes, women who have PhDs or are highly educated shoot themselves in the foot when it comes to marriage. I'm not knocking educated women. I'm just passing on a message. And and Jordan Peterson talks about talks about this in, in one of his podcasts that I watched. He said, the data set is clear. The higher the IQ level of a woman, the lower her chances of marriage. The data is clear on this. And why is that? Well, I can already hear the lady saying, oh, men are insecure. They don't want to marry smart, intelligent women. Well, let me tell you, women don't want to marry men dumber than them. I'll say it one more time. Smart women don't, uh, all women, but especially smart women, don't want to marry men dumber than them. So therein is the problem. The higher up the dominance hierarchy she climbs, the more intelligent she becomes, the higher her executive position in her company, the more money she earns, the less likely it is she will be married. Why? There's two reasons. Number one, as she climbs higher up that pyramid, she refuses to look down the pyramid. She won't pair with someone down the pyramid. She will continue to only look above her, which means that naturally, by default, the higher you climb, the less there is to choose from in terms of potential partners, potential spouses. The second reason is that she is now climbing this pyramid and she's looking at individuals only exclusively above her in that pyramid, in that dominance hierarchy. But at the same time, the primary, the primary uh, value, what's the word I'm looking for here? The primary thing that men value in a woman is declining in her. That is her youth, beauty, fertility, her youth, beauty, and fertility. So as she becomes more successful, this inevitably takes time, right? It takes time to become successful. She starts perhaps getting into her late 20s, early 30s. Well, guess what? Sadly for her, her education and qualifications and so on stand for very little when, by the time she wants to come to try and pair with someone above her in that dominance hierarchy. Because a man who is also just as successful as her or more successful as her, guess what? He's looking at the young girls again, late teens, early 20s. Data set is clear on this. Dating apps have, uh, I think it was Tinder and Bumble, have released their male versus female preferences in mating, mating strategies. And they have found from men from the ages of 20 all the way up to, I think it was 65 in this study, that they are all interested in the same demographic of women. That is early 20s women. No matter how old he is, no matter how successful he is, they are still interested in the same demographic. So then you have these highly educated women, very powerful in their positions and from a career perspective. And then they realize, oh crap, these men don't want me. They're looking at these uneducated, dumb, bimbo, bum girls working at McDonald's. Yes, that's right. Because men have different mating strategies. Anyway. Uh, you know, or too much, yeah, too, if you're too westernized or exposed to too much western lifestyle. Uh, also, they look at your uh, family background, if you come from a broken family or if you come from a combined family. So they look at so many factors. I mean, the sister raises a valid, a man should do this. He should absolutely do this. And I advise sisters to do the same damn thing for that matter. Kids who come from broken families, unless they have done the work to improve upon where they would have inev inevitably have fallen short, they are definitely at a disadvantage to kids raised in nuclear homes. The data is clear on this. And if you're watching this right now and you're from a broken family, don't be disheartened. Don't, be don't, don't feel like giving up. Just understand, if you haven't done the work to heal those, those wounds or to 
to make up for those deficits that you have incurred as a result of probably it's not even your fault as a result of simply being raised in a broken home your mum and dad didn't make it work you've got work to do you've 100% got work to do there's no doubt about this you're on the back foot but if you can acknowledge that and recognize that you can start rectifying the problem so yes a man should look into whether a sister was raised in a broken home or not and vice versa a sister should look in, look into whether a man was raised in a broken home why because then she she or he can start looking into has that had an impact on their emotional stability their ability to pay a bond invariably it typically has it usually has unless that individual has done the work and it's reversible you can do the work but you're going to have to do it when they're choosing a woman or categorizing a woman as marriage material, right? And the more you check all these boxes, the more you rank higher in the chart. And if you check lesser boxes, you rank lower. So this this is just the reality of the world we're living in or the society we're living in. And some of these things are not in most women's control. Like you, women can't control what family they, they are brought up in. They can't True. control their appearance. So all of these things are... I think what she means by they can't control their appearance is that if she is not naturally very attractive, then there's not much you can do about that. Yes and no. I mean, of course, first and foremostly, you can keep yourself in shape as a woman and as a man for that matter. Secondly, women have tricks that, cer that certain tricks that men don't have, makeup and so on. So I understand. I think what she's trying to say is if you're not naturally gorgeous, there's, you know, or let's say you're naturally unattractive, there's only so much you can do. Fine. That's fair. Just make women rank a little different in the chart so you'd find that there's so many women who ranking lower in this chart and it becomes a bit more challenging for them to find partnership in life right i have come across uh family members of mine i've, I've had so many family members i've had in-laws that i've lived with i've had friends who have gone through challenges in finding the right person the right man because probably that they ranked a little lower in the chart maybe because they were too educated they had a master's and a phd and they were like okay maybe because they very interesting very interesting that she's acknowledging that this is a problem yes it's true men don't want to marry women who are higher up the dominance hierarchy than themselves why those type of women are a headache to be with unless you are at her level or above her level but women are just as put off marrying men lower down lower down the dominance hierarchy than them now i can hear you saying oh but khadija radiallahu anh, married the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam well the exception doesn't make the rule number one number two you're not khadija number three he's not the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam meaning next guy next man don't take these random exceptions and try to make them out as, their, as though they are the rule generally speaking and then, by the way, he was the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest of mankind, which means her hypergamy was still satisfied because he was the messenger of Allah. And she could see those characteristics, those special traits in him, even before he became a prophet. Nevertheless, women are just as put off marrying men who are not as intelligent as them. And definitely men don't want to marry women who they feel like are going to give them a headache. Women are looking for leaders, right? Even successful, smart, educated ones, they're still looking for leaders to lead the marriage. Well, guess what? If a woman is looking for a leader, it means the leader is looking for a follower. And therein is the difference between us. What women value in a man and the qualities and, and skill sets she's looking for in a man, strong, independent, and so on. Men are not looking for those same skill sets in a woman. We want her to be strong, but in a different way. We want her to be strong in her ability to submit. You want me to lead? Well, you're going to have to trust me, baby girl. Trust me. It's going to require your trust. You are going to have to forfeit certain views or things that you want to do and so on. That's the price of following a leader. We have presidents of countries that make decisions for us. We don't necessarily agree all, all with all of them, but we submit. Why? Because there are leaders, like it or hate it. And generally speaking, they do a reasonable job. That's the price of picking a leader. So highly educated women or high-powered women, much more difficult to lead. Much more difficult to lead. There is some truth in the saying young and dumb. Yes, absolutely. If they reach 30 and above and they couldn't find partnership by then, so they rank even lower. People be like, why is she not married at this 
And you know what? Let me provide some clarification before that gets taken out as a soundbite and then misconstrued. Amazon, Facebook, Google, any company for that matter, when they hire, they make hires for their respective companies. When they're looking for new recruits, what are they typically looking for? Young blood. That's how they define it. We want young blood. Why do they want young blood? Because they want new employees that they can nurture and mold into the culture of the company. Amazon has a specific culture. Facebook has a specific culture. There's no right or wrong in those two company cultures. Just because Amazon do it one way and Facebook do it another way doesn't mean that Facebook is better than Amazon. No, it just simply means that what works for Amazon works for Amazon and they don't want to change that. What works for Facebook works for Facebook and they don't want to change that. So they want young recruits who can come in and be molded into the culture of the company. But on the other hand, they do hire for positions of seniority, senior positions. In those instances, Amazon, Facebook, and all companies for that matter, are looking for individuals with experience. Experience of leading a com company, of leading people. Now, when you're looking for a leader, you value their experience. But when you're looking for a follower, no, you want them to have as little experience as possible so that they can be easily, they can, they can easily follow your lead. When I took my driving test, I had already been driving for a number of years before I took my actual exam uh, in Saudi Arabia as well. I was driving just normally hardy. You can drive on a provisional license in Saudi Arabia back then anyway. And I didn't have my, my UK uh, British driving license. When I finally came back to the UK, I did my license. I, I spent the first 10 lessons having to unlearn all of my bad habits just to get me at baseline of zero. Then the next 10 lessons were to learn how to actually drive according to how, you know, UK law wants you to pass the driving test. That's the problem of experience when you need to be a follower. You have to unlearn so many things that you know. So whilst women are looking for experience in a man, the ability to lead, which obviously if you want to be a good leader, you need experience. Men are not looking for those same qualities. No, sir. No, ma'am. We're looking for lack of experience. Your experience is a hindrance to him, not an asset, because it makes you more difficult to lead. Hope that makes sense. Probably they're, they ex, they're exposed to Western lifestyle. People will be like, I don't want to marry her. So these are, ama these are there are amazing, beautiful women out there who just unfortunately don't meet all these criteria and are ranked lower in that chart of marriage material. So what happens is I've seen them, I have been so close to these women in my life, like I've had close family members, close in-laws, close friends who are just looking for companionship and are looking just to find a good man. And as the, the more the time goes, They're not finding the right man, their age also continues going, and it gets even more difficult for them, right? So one of the reasons, the right reasons that a, a, a man would want to, a couple would want to go into a polygamy relationship is basically to provide stara in Swahili that we call. Stara is like, a, let me say in Swahili, unamstiri, unamkemagini, is your caring, protecting, your guiding, your your keeping safe or your guarding a woman from let's say society from for anybody to go into a marriage uh one of the main reasons that god likes it is because it provides star for women right and one of the reasons that uh we agreed to go into this polygamy relationship is both kamara and i knew uh my co-wife before that she was friends of ours she's actually very good friends with him they've been friends for long they've been best friends and huh? And both him and I cared for her like so much. So I'm not I'm confused. Her husband was best friends with, with, the, with the new wife before he married her. Is that, am I hearing that right? Her from a friend perspective before that. And I knew that she was an amazing person, probably just not so fortunate to have found someone so quickly than I, than I did. So it had nothing to do with the person that she was, just circumstances. 
and uh, he Kamara cared for this woman and loved her and 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 wanted to keep caring and loving for her in the right way without it being a secret. So that's why he brought up this suggestion and we agreed on doing this. Because okay, it sounds like that the brother started catching Phoenix. That's what I'm understanding. Wallahu a'lam. That's what I'm understanding. It was the right reasons. Like both of them cared for each other. Both of them loved each other and. They wanted to keep on caring and loving each other the right way. So this was a great, uh, it was one of the biggest reasons and one of the right reasons that, that he did it. Um, and one of, the, when one of the reasons that why it's encouraged in Islam. The Westerners make it look like polygamy is, uh, is oppressing women, but actually it's the opposite of that. Polygamy actually helps to give women their rights understand so there's so many women out there that could be having babies for guys there could be baby mamas out there there could be mistresses out there these women have nothing they have no rights but in islam the opportunity of polygamy is put there to give these women also rights to having children who have a family name uh to being cared for provided for to being given companionship and to be given inheritance, all of these things that Islam gives these women rights to having and allows polygamy. But the Westerners make it look like polygamy is oppressing women. Would you prefer your sister be someone's mistress or someone's baby mama living in secret? Or would you prefer that he, she is claimed as someone's wife, that she has a name to take under her kids have a name, her kids have a father figure, uh, they they get every single right that a wife would get. I think that if it was me, I would choose that they definitely have the opportunity of polygamy. So uh, that is one of the first reasons that I mentioned. The second reason, the second reason that I accepted going into polygamy is I understand one thing: a man can care and love for another woman and it has nothing to do with you. Okay, girl, it has nothing to do with you. If your man is out there caring or loving other women, okay? It has nothing to do with you being a bad person or whatever, unless you give him a reason to. But if you are a good person and you are doing good, you're being the best version of yourself and you're not giving a person a reason to hate you, why are you worried about not being enough? You know what? I salute the sister on that point. I salute her. That's a very important point she makes. I experienced this with my first wife when I got married again for the second time, when I took a second wife. The natural proclivity of most women is to assume there's something wrong with themselves. Oh, what, you don't love me as much anymore? Is it because I'm not beautiful? Is it because I'm fat? I'm thin? I'm tall? I'm short? What is it? There must be something wrong with me for you to take another woman. Why does she think like that? Because she's thinking from her feminine female mindset for her for a woman a woman could only take interest in another man if she started to lose attraction to her husband be it physical attraction or emotional attraction whatever the case may be she can only start to catch feelings for another man once she starts falling out of love with this current one so then women start to project that onto men and say you must have fallen out of love with me. You must be less attracted to me. That's why you're looking for another woman. So this is an excellent point that the sister makes. Props to her for recognizing and articulating that in a, in a, in a very good way. Sister, it's nothing to do with you. Let me tell you something. Four wives is not enough. Four hundred is not enough. A man could have every single woman on earth and there'd be just one woman left who is not married, who is not, sorry, who is not his, and he'd still want her. It's just the nature of man. We are aggressively procreative. Aggressively. Allah limited us to four, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his infinite wisdom. But a man can go on indefinitely. He can have the most beautiful woman on earth. You see these celebrities all the time. Arnold Schwarzenegger. He had his wife. He cheated on her with the maid, fam. With the maid. Had a kid with the maid. It's like, he can have a, a man can have a very beautiful woman and cheat on... Cheat on, on okay. And let's say, I don't want to use the word cheat because that gets, gets us into another definition, which we'll talk about later. But he could have an intimate affair with a woman who is half, half the attraction of his wife at home. He, and he could still do it. He could still do it. And not feel anything for this woman either. And still love his wife just as much. I'm not saying whether it's right or wrong. I'm just simply telling you, a man is capable of that. So this is an excellent point that the sister raises.
Okay? We keep thinking that the husband is the prize, okay? Being the best woman for your man is the ultimate prize goal. No, it's not, okay? It is not the ultimate goal. Your ultimate goal should not be, I want to be the best wife for Mr. Whoever. No. Your ultimate goal in life is to be the best you for yourself, okay? I understood that in an early... Okay, I think I understand what she's trying to say. And I'm going to be presumptuous here because I nearly said something. But I realize, I think I realize what she's trying to say. I think what she's trying to say is don't make your husband the focus of your life. I think that's what she's saying. Because yes, he is the prize, by the way. Logic dictates if you have succeeded in your hypergamous nature of marrying up the dominance hierarchy, meaning you've married a man who's stronger than you, smarter than you, more intelligent than you, and is, is wealthier than you, then yes, he is the prize because he is superior to you on all of those metrics. So yes, he is the prize. However, I think what the sister is saying is, girl, don't make him your life. You are here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's your primary goal. He is included in that, but don't make him the sole focus. And that I agree with. Because if you make him the sole focus, the moment he marries another woman, you will be destroyed. Your, your heart will just be shattered because he was your world. So I think that's what she's trying to say. Maybe caring or loving other women, it has nothing to do with the woman they are with, right? Uh, come on, like we've, I've seen so many uh, strong women out there. The Obamas, they went through some infidelity scandal. If you look at the, uh, how do you say, Beyonce and Jay-Z, there was a scandal there. So, so many of, there's so many couples who go through their husbands having affairs with other women or liking other women or having a fling or whatever with other women. It doesn't mean that Michelle was a bad woman. It doesn't mean that she was not good enough. No, it She's doesn't true. mean that Beyonce was not a good woman for Jay-Z to do it. I'm just, I'm just giving you examples, right? So if your man is caring or loving another woman, it has nothing to do with you, okay? So stop beating yourself about it. Ask yourself, oh my God. I hate to play devil's advocate here, but I'm going to anyway. Oftentimes, it's not to do with you, but it can be. I'll give you an example. If you as a woman are not satisfying his sexual needs, his sexual urges, then he's going to look for a source elsewhere. If you as a woman are not the comfort, his raha nafsiya, peace of the soul, when he comes home, you're fighting him 24-7. He's going to be inclined to looking for another woman. So typically, we start from a position of it's not you. It's just his nature. But it can be you. And only you as a woman will know the answer to this. Uh, with having said that, women trip themselves up all the time. They tend to take the blame on this. It must be me. It must be something wrong with me. No, for the most part, it's not. But only you know if you are being a headache to him at home, if you are depriving him and not meeting his sexual urges and so on. If you are meeting those basic needs of his, his sexual urges and just being generally nice around the home, then it's not you. She's right. She's right. But you have to be honest with yourself in this because it may well be you. Maybe you are depriving him. Only you can honestly answer that. Was I not enough? Oh my God, I should have done better. No, okay? The husband is not the prize. You need to focus on being the best you for yourself. She keeps saying that, but if he was not the prize, you would not have married him. Hypergamy would have failed. And that's the issue I take. But again, I think what the sister is trying to say is, is that he is not the be-all and end-all of your life. So we're going to give the sister a pause on this one. And that is it. Okay, that was the second one. The third one is that, number one, I also like the idea of raising a family in a diverse environment, right? Um, I like raising kids. I, li I love having a very big, diverse community style, family style. Um, and... That was one of the reasons I also accepted it. I am from East African Arab. I am East African Arab. My husband is West African uh, African. And my co-wife is Malaysian. She's from Asia. So, wow. I love the diversity there. Our kids are going to be from so many different places. I don't even mind adopting other kids. I don't mind. So, because I like the, I like raising kids in a community style, in a diverse family environment. Because it's interesting that she uses the word community because women are very communitarian. Very communitarian. They like communities. It's good for building strong family, a strong family unit. It's terrible for leading. 
we are built for different things. That's why women tend to be better at the affairs inside the home, dealing with the children and so on. Men tend to be better at the on, in the affairs outside of the home, leading. Women are more communitarian. Men are more, well, that's what patriarchy is. Patriarchy is a hierarchy, and, and, and at the top of the hierarchy is leadership. And that's taken us onto a different discussion. We're going to pause this here. I mean, I hope this is what this works out for the sister. I have seen videos like this in the past, idealistic videos. Some of you may remember the Hassanat thing that came out a few years ago. And hey, listen, I don't have an opinion for or against Hassanat. I've had him actually come on my lives a couple of times. I don't know the details, the in and the out of his situation. And frankly, I don't give two shits either. Yeah. So before you look, start come commenting here, he's that, he's the other. Habibi, mind your own business. Worry about yourself. The point I'm trying to raise here is that I remember when his wives were talking, speaking idealistically similar to this, and then shit hit the fan and everything fell apart. So I hope it works out for the system. I really do. Um, generally speaking, when I've seen sisters speak idealistically like this, something's going on inside in the background and I'm not judging the sister I hope I'm this doesn't refer to her I hope she's the exception to my observations in the past but the natural proclivity I have found the natural state of affairs is for a woman to be naturally disinclined towards polygyny if she doesn't like it this is a good sign this is a good sign even the wives of the Prophet ﷺ were not jumping up and down for it Aisha radiallahu anha when Juwaria came to the door of the Prophet ﷺ, she was a beautiful woman she was around 21 at the time when Aisha opened the door and Prophet ﷺ was behind her, Aisha saw this woman and repositioned her body to block the eyesight of the Prophet ﷺ from seeing this beautiful woman. Because she knew, Aisha knew, if the Prophet ﷺ saw her, he may well want to marry her. Lo and behold, he did marry her. That's the natural proclivity of a woman to be disinclined towards it. She accepts it for the sake of Allah, but she's not jumping up and down for it. With that being said, I hope it works out for this sister. I'm going to put the link in the description to the full video if you want to finish it off there. If you found value in this video, hit the like, hit the sub. I've got all of my links in the description. Join my private men's community on Patreon. Uh, four laws of masculine power. If you, haven't, if you haven't studied or mastered them yet, hit the link in the description and you will be able to find out more from there. Zakum Allah khair. Take care. Share this with a brother as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.